Hey friend, welcome back to another episode of the Joy at Home podcast. I could not be more thrilled for today's show. We've got such an interesting topic that we're going to be discussing. We're going to be talking about chicken keeping. And yes, I am talking about real chickens, real chicken keeping. I was telling today's guest before I hit record that I'm all ears today because my kids and I, our family over here, we are entertaining the idea of getting started in this area. So I can't wait to dive into the world of chicken keeping. Let me tell you about today's guest, Dahlia Monteroso, also known as the president of Chickenlandia, is a backyard chicken educator, entertainer, and author of the book, Let's All Keep Chickens, a down-to-earth guide to natural practices for healthier birds and a happier world. When she's not teaching in-person classes or doing seminars, you can find her on her popular YouTube channel. It's called Welcome to Chickenlandia, as well as on her top-rated podcast, Bok Talk, or her online course, Backyard Chickens 101, a chicken course for everyone. I love that. I love the name of that. (laughs) Welcome to the podcast, Dahlia. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It is great to be here. It's so fun to have a topic that's truly new and different that has never been covered on the show before. In fact, nothing even remotely close to this has been covered on the show before. So before we dive into the good stuff, I am dying to know how you actually got started. How did you enter the world of chicken keeping? And I'd love for you to share a little bit about your family and where you live and this whole process of how you entered into this exciting adventure. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I will tell you, I did not, you know, as a little girl, I did not wake up in the morning and think to myself, you know what, I'm going to be a a backyard chicken educator. <laughs> That's what I'm going to be the president of Chickenlandia when I grow up. <laughs> that was like not my experience. I totally grew up in the suburbs, really disconnected from my food. I mean, like a lot of our experiences, you know, in, in modern times, a lot of people have grown up that way. Um, so I didn't have, you know, it's, it's not like my mom kept chickens or it was in the family or anything like that. It was in the family back in Guatemala. My, my parents are from Guatemala, but I was born in the States. So just was not exposed to anything like that. So, um, I was, I'm going to like, I'm going to go a few years back here <laughs> so you can get the full picture. I was working in Los Angeles as a personal assistant and I was very deep into that world. I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to like be in show business, all this stuff. Um, I was there for about five years. I ended up meeting my husband. Um, he's still in the entertainment industry. He's actually an aerial cinematographer, which is like cinematography from um, the helicopter. Um, wow. So yeah, I met him and then we were like, okay, let's get married, all that good stuff. And we started thinking about having kids and you know, both of us were like, you know what? We just don't want to stay in LA to do this. Like, you know, we need to go somewhere where it's, we would feel better about raising our kids. So we decided to move up, you know, my husband's Canadian. So we're like almost at the border of Canada. We're in Bellingham, Washington. Um, and we moved up here and I had my first child and he was about, I think he was about a little over a year old. And I really started to think about getting chickens And I think what really led me to that was that I was suffering from postpartum depression and I knew that something was off, but I didn't really realize like how much it was affecting me. And I just felt like I need to have something else. Like I need, I need something that's just mine. Like I love being a mom and I loved identifying as a mom, you know, I'm a mom. That's a big part of my identity. I'm a wife. But I also was like mourning the loss of this dream because it was a big dream. Like from the time when I was a little kid, it's like, oh, I want to do like these these big things. I want to be in show business. I want to be a rock star. I want to be a talk show host, you know, all this stuff. And so I was kind of like struggling with letting that go, even though I loved, obviously I loved my, my little baby boy and I loved my family and I was 
happy about that, but I just, I just felt like I was mourning something. And then on top of that, the postpartum depression. So I started doing, you know, I was like doing all the research and everything. It's like, oh, I'm going to get some chickens, you know, spring rolls around or actually it was the summer. It rolled around and I was like, I went to the farm store and I told myself and people that have chickens are going to understand what I'm about to say, because <laughs> I told, I originally told my husband, oh, I'm going to get like three or four chickens. And then I'm like doing all this research and it's like, I think I'm going to get six chickens, you know, <laughs> and then I'm doing more. Re and it's like, there's all these breeds and they're like so much fun and all this stuff. Go to the farm store, come home with 10 10 baby chicks. <laughs> and I we're in the suburbs. I hear that's a fairly common thing. Yes, that is chicken math. <laughs> chicken so I had already been hit by the bug. Yeah. So, and it was so funny because they were in a bag. Like I went to the farm store and they put the baby chicks in like a paper sack. So I had like this paper sack full of baby chicks. And be, you know, before that, I think I had held a baby chick like once. So I had everything set up and I just remember I'm taking the baby chicks out of the bag and I'm putting them just one by one into the brooder, you know, these little, these little tiny things that are like really resilient, but also really vulnerable at the same time as little fuzzy things. And I will tell you that in that moment, something happened. It was like divine intervention. Like my heart opened and a new dream came in. And I really feel like that was the moment when I started to heal. And I, I just became like, you know, my family was like, can we see some pictures of your kids? Because you keep posting pictures of baby chicks. And we, <laughs> we really love your chickens, but we'd like to know more about your family. But I was just like, so I became more passionate about it than I eat. I, it was completely unexpected. And I remember recently I heard this quote, somebody was talking about, I don't even know what I was watching or what, but someone was, was saying a quote from Steven Spielberg and they were like the, the, he, Steven Spielberg said something like the dream of your life sneaks up behind you. I'm paraphrasing here, but it, you like it's you don't expect it it sneaks up behind you and i was like that is so what happened to me it was like it was like i was assigned this role and it has become so much more than just chicken keeping because like i said i feel like i started to heal you know when i when i got baby chicks and i started spending out time outside in nature i started connecting with you know, my history and just like the history of humans, because we all have that. It's, it's like this common thing in all of our, in all of our history that we share. So I really feel like, well, I kind of lost my train of thought, but, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I just, this has just become my passion and my purpose and I never expected for this to be the way that I would get this message out that I want to get into the world. And that's one of like joy and peace and compassion and love and all those things that really matter to me. And I kind of feel like a rock star still, you know, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I kind of feel like I'm still doing entertainment. This is so incredible. I can tell that you've worked in the entertainment industry because let me tell you why, as you're sharing all that with me, it, it was like a movie unfolding, like <laughs> It was so visual. Like I'm picturing the whole thing. Like there's, you know, your, your Guatemalan background and there's Texas and there's LA and like all the hustle and bustle of that. And you meet your husband and, and he's in this amazing line of work. And then you, you're out in Washington and you've got these kids and you're, you're dealing with the postpartum depression, which I think is actually way yeah. more common than, than everyone oh, yeah. wants to admit or wants to talk about. Yeah. It's something very real. It's something that a lot of women are dealing with and relate to when, you know, and you sharing that, I appreciate you sharing that. And then you go, you get this kind of idea, you research it, you go to the farm store and it's like this, 
like the heavens open and shine down moment and you've got this bag of little baby chicks, right? And something just ignites inside of you and you bring them home. And it's like, I'm picturing like sunset and chickens in the yard <laughs> and yeah. peace and calm right, yeah. and healing. I mean, that's kind of the picture that you painted. Would you say that's accurate? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I just didn't, you know, it doesn't matter. Like chickens don't care if you don't feel good. They don't care if you want to stay inside and stare at your phone and lie in bed. They they don't care. They have to get fed. You have, right. you have to connect with them. Even if it's like yucky outside or whatever, you have to go outside. You have to connect with them. And I always find that, and I have, you know, I have like uh, some chronic pain stuff going on and some anxiety stuff going on. It's like, you know, I, I don't know. I don't even know if I know a woman that doesn't have stuff like that going on, but I certainly have it. And I can feel pretty lousy and go outside and spend time with my chickens. And within a few minutes, I just feel lifted. And I'm not saying that they're like, a cure for anything or like can replace medication or anything. I feel like I have to say that, but they do, there is something really special about them. And I was completely surprised by that. Like I, I just thought, Oh, I'm going to get chickens. I'm going to have eggs and I love animals and everything, but I didn't expect them each to have their own like little personality and for me to connect with them so deeply and to have like this kind of, interspecies relationship with them. I just, I didn't expect that like you would with like a cat or a dog, but yeah. it is, it is there. You well, know? it sounds like it's something, it's so much bigger than you. I mean, they depend on you and it's in, in that relationship has almost become therapeutic for you. And I can see that. Are oh your, yeah, absolutely. That's Are your kids, how old are your kids now? Tell me about your kids. How old are they now? How many do you have? And are they actively involved in the chicken keeping with you? They, they are, um, 14. I'm, I'm like, they just had birthday. So it's like, okay. So they are 14 and 10 and they do help, especially if I go out of town. Cause I do go out of town to, to speak at different places. Um, the oldest will like completely take over the, the chicken yard when I'm out of town. When I'm in town, not, not as much. And I kind of, I kind of feel bad about that because I'm a little bit of a, a control freak. So I, I like, I, I, you know, I get nervous and I want to handle everything myself. So I kind of have to let that go. And I was just recently thinking, cause he's been saying, I want a job. I want to earn some money. And I'm like, I think I'm going to like put him to work, like give him like some, some fairly intense, some like more intense chores to do out there. <laughs> Um, and maybe he can earn a little bit of money doing it, but the little one, you know, the younger one, he does, he really likes to help with the chickens and he, he loves the chickens and, um, he'll spend some time out there. Uh, but I should, you know, I don't get them out there as much as I should. I feel like I need to get them out there more, but they have grown up with it their whole lives. Like to them, it's just like, oh, there's mom and her chickens. <laughs> you know, she's <laughs> <laughs> They're like pro chicken keepers at this point. I'm guessing. I think it's so great to get them involved, to have them involved, especially as you were mentioning, just connecting with nature, getting our kids out in the sunshine and fresh air is so important. And then when you bring animals really of any kind into it, I think it is so good for our kids. So we homeschool over here. And I'm curious, as you're talking about your kids being involved, I'm sure other moms are wondering in what ways could keeping chickens really be an enriching adventure for their kids, whether they homeschool or public school, either way, how would you say to in, it yes. could be an enriching adventure for the kids? Well, I think what's so fascinating about the chicken yard is it's, it's basically like, it's a, it's a mini world. It's like a, it's like a me ecosystem you know, they can learn about nature. They can learn about how nature interacts with each other, with itself. Um, it, it's also like a mini society because the flock has all these dynamics and you can look at those dynamics and kind of compare it to how human beings, you know, interact with each other. Um, there's like a, you know, a whole social structure. You can talk about, 
how it makes you feel because chickens can be kind of mean. Like they, there, there's a very intense hierarchy among chickens, and you can talk about, you know, how how that relates to how human beings can be and the the hierarchy among human beings. Um, you know, I mean, you can learn about nutrition, not just like you can learn about the egg. Or, you know, if you do meat chickens, I'm not, I don't do meat chickens, but if you do, you can certainly talk about that process and the nutrition that, that it gives to people and what eggs can do for people. But then also the feed that you give to your chickens um, and how, you know, what they need for the, you know, to lay eggs every day. Um, Gosh, there's food production and like, not just modern you can talk about modern food production and how it differs from what you're doing in your backyard and then just the history of how chickens have helped us to survive through the ages and how they've given us meat and eggs through the ages and what that looked like and then like you know like illness health um the cycle of life certainly and and even death you know, there's, there's definitely some lessons in there about that. So I just think for homeschool kids, it's like, it, it almost like you can just use it for just about everything, you know, because it is like this whole mini world in your backyard. And then the other thing I was thinking about is like, you know, for, for homeschoolers, there can be times when it can get monotonous or you can feel frustrated or you can feel like, wow, I really need to kind of step away from this. And in those moments, what a great time to just go out into the chicken yard and say, well, let's look at this lesson a little bit differently. Let's go outside and think about it in terms of in relation to the chickens, you know, depending on what it is. And it can kind of give you that, that break and get you outside and just give you a change of scenery. So I I thought, I thought that that would be, that that's a good way um, to use it in homeschooling as well. That is really good. I found when we're having a rough day or we just need a break, going outside makes all the difference in the world. And sometimes we'll take our books and just go do school outside. And so I think that that is a great learning opportunity. You went so deep with that. I never even had considered, you know, as I was thinking about chicken keeping, I was like, okay, the life cycle, you know, you've got the egg and the chicken, yeah. and the you know, mm-hmm. all the things and the life cycle, but I, I had never thought so deeply as to like the social structure and even bringing in the history. And of course you've got math and science all wrapped up in that. I mean, honestly, you could incorporate every single subject of your day into chicken keeping. As you were talking through that, I was just kind of really realizing that what a learning opportunity. What are some, what are some practical ways then that kids from little all the way up through high school could actually help to take care of the chickens that will allow them really that, that hands-on learning opportunity. Well, I think when they're really little, I mean, we do have to acknowledge that there are germs in the chicken yard. Like we have to be careful about that kind of thing. So we don't want, um, we want to take them out into the chicken yard for short periods of time where they can like do, do a very simple task, like collecting eggs, um, you know, they can feed the chickens, they can maybe help with filling up the feeders and the waterers or giving them a treat or, um, you know, bringing out uh, kitchen scraps and giving giving them to them. You just want to keep it simple, especially the smaller they are, where they can just kind of wash their hands afterwards because <laughs> kids are always sitting there their hands in their mouth. And there's something to be said for farm kids. Like they're always healthier, you know, because they just get that exposure everywhere. But, you know, we just want to, um, keep it balanced. Okay. <laughs> um, and then as they get older, there's, uh, oh, and growing sprouts get, grow. You can grow sp- sprouts for your chickens. It's super easy. And that is something kids love and little kids can do it. And it's just so fun to grow something and then you go outside and feed it to the chickens. So I wanted to mention that. Um, and then as, as the kids get older, they can, they can do things that are more involved. Like they could do, you know, dirtier things like a deep, deep coop cleaning, kind of help with that. 
treating chickens for mites and lice or other external parasites like that, that is something that usually at one point in your chicken keeping experience, you will confront. Um, and so that is something that they can help with, um, you know, moving feed bags into storage or whatever, like just very physical work. Um, older kids can help with that. And, you know, I mean, I think it's, it's also great to have them be part of like just the learning experience, like the research into it, maybe planning the flock, planning additions to the flock. Um, those things that I think, especially older kids, teenagers would really love to do and um, would be, uh, you know, help them to feel just like a real level of responsibility and, and participation. I think, I think that would be great. I love that you're realistically sharing the good, the bad, and the ugly of it. Like you're not painting <laughs> yes. just this picture of it. it's beautiful, wonderful, and fun all the time, but realistically it is also work. It's a great learning opportunity, but there will yeah. be some things that you will deal with, but you know, that's real, that's real life. We have tough yeah. things that we deal with in real life. And so I think mm -hmm. on one hand, that's just equipping us for the real world. So keeping in mind that there are some tough parts when it comes to chicken keeping, I've got to ask you, why is it worth it? Why would it be worth it? Like what's the single greatest lesson, uh, the single okay. greatest thing that would make it worth it to do this with our kids? Okay. I was thinking about this. I was thinking about this and I, I have to have a couple of honorable mentions because, <laughs> because I, I guess it would be like the top three and there is, there is one at the very top, but I, I want to, I want to say that learning compassion is a huge one. And I have a saying, like, if you, if you feel angry, if you feel upset, if you feel resentful, go hold a baby chick because wow. it's impossible to have those feelings. You know, if, if you've ever seen like a, you know, a big man or whatever, and he's just holding a baby chick in that moment, there's just so much vulnerability being exchanged and it will really kind of change your heart. And so I think from the time a child is very small and you teach them, okay, now you're going to, you know, cause they want to hold that baby chick, you know, they really do. And if you don't watch them, they're like, you know, <laughs> holding this baby chick. It's like, don't get too excited. You have to be really gentle. You have to, you have to remember you're big and they're small, you know? We have to take care of them. We have to be gentle with them. And they learn that. And they, I just think that is so valuable, you know, a lesson for a child to learn because they go and they take that out into the world. And, you know, I, and I'm not saying, um, you know, I'm not a vegan, like I, I'm, I'm not a vegetarian. So I'm not saying that there will never be a time when you have to humanely, um, you know, put a chicken down or anything like that. But when you, when you deal with them and recognize that they are living beings, it will bring forth the compassion in you, you know, when you, when you connect with them that way. And I just think it is so, it is so important to, to teach that to our kids, especially in our modern world. Um, and then the other thing, another thing I think is really important is learning how to listen to your intuition. Because, and I, I say this to all, to all my students, um, there will be a time when something will happen and you won't know what to do or whatever, you know, I've got this chicken, it's sick or something like that. And I don't know what to do. And you'll get like all this advice and everything, and it can get very confusing and overwhelming, but the one thing that I will always remind people about is that human beings have been keeping chickens for literally millennia. Like, <laughs> like this is within us. It is absolutely the most natural thing that we could be doing. And if we can take a moment and remember that and try and connect with that, and ask ourselves, okay, what, you know, what is my intuition telling me to do? What is my, what's my heart telling me to do in this circumstance? Then, you know, that is a skill. That is a life skill. And it's so important. And we develop that. The more that we have it, the more that we trust ourselves, the more that we can listen to that part of ourselves. Um, I think we do better in life if we have that skill. 
So that is, that's my other one, my other honorable mention. Okay. (laughs) But (laughs) the ultimate lesson that you can learn in the chicken yard is how important it is to connect with nature every single day. And especially in the world that our children are growing up in right now, you know, even if we raise them just completely away from electronics and everything, they are in the world. There will be a time, no matter what, where they're going to get pulled in, you know, really away from nature. And every day we deal with that, you know, that, that pull away from, from really where we're supposed to be. Um, and I think it's so important to instill in children when they're young, this connection with nature every single day, because they will, they will remember that and they will take that with them into the world. And there may be times, you know, kids become teenagers and, there may be times when they are really disconnected from nature, but they still will have that little string that kind of brings them back into, into what really where we're supposed to be. So I think just considering the way uh, the modern world that we live in um, and all the trappings that it has, it's just the most important thing is that you keep that connection with nature and that, and that's really what chickens with really chickens force us to do that. I think those are so, three. And I, I need that. Great. I need that. <laughs> those are three great reasons. Well, you got me sold. <laughs> I, I know. I'm it. so glad. I love it. Well, we do something. <laughs> I call it nature school over here and we live on a farm. We live on 40 acres, which is so fun because we're able to go out and go exploring and, We've got, you know, a golden retriever dog. We've got a perfect place to keep chickens out there. Actually, (laughs) we've got deer and turkey, wild deer and wild turkey in our, you know, backyard, 20, 30 foot out the back door every single day. And it, man, what an awesome opportunity for the kids to be able to go outside, put their feet in the grass and to interact with nature in such a way. And I'm actually really impressed by the people who do live in the suburbs and and in the cities and that are still doing things like the chicken keeping and giving their kids those opportunities because it's not so easy to just walk outside and be in the middle of nature when you're in a situation like that. And so I think what an enriching opportunity and experience to bring that into your backyard and to have that available for your kids. So like I said, Dahlia, you've got me sold. And so I just absolutely have to know if we were going to step into this, where does one even start? Like, what are the basics? What are maybe the, the breeds that are best to start with? How would you start in a very simple way? I would start by taking my course. <laughs> yes. That's a great starting point. <laughs> Had to, got to get that plug in. Got to get that plug in. Absolutely. You know, I think, uh, the main thing for people that are wanting to get started, because I work with a lot of people in, in, you know, in this moment where they're, they're like, oh, I want to get started. And they will kind of get stuck in that research phase because it's easy to get stuck there. And there's a ton of information out there. And a lot of that information is conflicting. So you can get confused. And I, what I will see is that people will be excited about it then they will get into the research phase and then they'll get overwhelmed Mm -hmm. and then they will kind of keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And what I tell people is like, look, chicken keeping, I, I don't want you to think of it as something that is hard. It is easy. We have been doing this for thousands of years. It is in your DNA. It is in your history. You can do this. So what I want you to do is make a date where, okay, I'm done. I'm going to research for this amount of time. And then this is the date that we're going to get our baby chicks or get our adult chickens and start our flock. And I think this is actually so fun for kids because it can almost be like, you can make like almost like an advent calendar or whatever. Like this is the countdown to when we're, (laughs) because they were, they're like, we want baby chicks now, you know? So, but they get to count down to when, around the time that, and give your, give yourself a little leeway because sometimes things happen and you can't get baby chicks on a certain day or whatever, but at least they know like what week or month they're going to get them and just make that commitment after you've done a certain amount of research. And I would say like, 
if it's starting to feel really complicated, you're probably thinking too much about it. Like it really should be something very simple. And to remember the basics, like they need, they need shelter, they need food, um, you know, they need space and obviously they need water. Okay. There's a lot of things that you can do beyond that, but the, those are the basics. And to even remember, like if you go, you know, in the Western world, chicken lo looks a certain way and the, the re and I'm not saying it's good or bad, but some of the ways that we keep chickens in the Western world, you can really see the influence from factory farming. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you go to uh, the development, the, the developing world, you will see chickens running around. Like if you go to Guatemala, like you're going to see chickens running around. You know, my grandmother, my great grandmother, like she didn't even have a coop. They just slept in the tree. And, you know, of course it's a different climate. Okay. Um, and they probably, you know, they very likely had a dog that protected them because predators are a big issue. Um, but if you kind of keep that, that idea that, you know, chickens, are very adaptable and keep that as your just kind of like your foundation going into it, then it's going to be so much easier. You're going to feel so much less overwhelmed. And that's just what I, what I really try to tell people because people always have like, okay, well, what, what breeds do I want? What are the quiet breeds? What are the ones that lay the most eggs? And those are all great questions. And I'm happy to, to answer those. Um, but I also want to tell people, you know, the main thing to remember is that you're doing something that many, many, many people have done before you and that you can do it. And so that's, that's what I would say. Make a, make a time limit, you know, do your research, keep it, keep it simple. Find somebody that kind of aligns with your philosophy. And I always say, you know, there's the chicken landia way, but it's not the only way. So I'm very natural leaning. Um, some people aren't as comfortable with that. They want to know a more kind of a more modern way. That's fine too. But just kind of stick to that because if you if you really get into it, like you're getting, you do, there is just so much information out there. But I would say, you know, you're asking about breeds. It, you know, think about the climate that you're in. Um, make sure that you get chickens that are hardy for your climate. So there's cold, hardy chickens. There's more heat, hardy chickens. Just make sure you're getting the right, right breeds for where you are and think about what you want. Like if you want lots of eggs and obviously you're going to go with like standard layer breeds. And then if you just want pets or whatever, you'll get like bantams, which are like miniature chickens. And they're super fun, especially if you have kids they're like bred more for beauty and, and for their personalities and stuff. I have a little bit of both. So that's, you know, <laughs> it's like a, and I have lots of rescue chickens though, but I, I wouldn't start with rescue chickens. Honestly, I would start with like, um, basic breeds that you could find at your local farm store. They're going to be good layers. They will likely be very decent for your, your climate that you're in. And they will be pretty docile breeds. You know, that's just what you're going to find. Buff Orpington, Bard Rock, Black Australorp, um, chickens like that. You know, the, the quintessential chickens that you see everywhere. But yeah, but mainly just go for it. Go for it. <laughs> you know, do it. I think that's, I think you gave just great advice and practical advice there. I think so many people get wrapped up in what I call analysis paralysis. It's so funny too, because you're sharing this and I'm like, it sounded like the beginning of our homeschool journey where you go down the rabbit hole and research, 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 and then it's three 30 in the morning and you're researching, researching, and it's curriculum is what it is in homeschool, where it's breeds of chicken and chicken keeping. And everyone yeah. wants to know <laughs> yeah. what curriculum do I use? And it's like, well, it's important, but it, that's not the most important thing. Kind of like with the breeds of chickens, right? That's important, but that's yeah. not the most important thing. A lot of it is committing to it, setting a date, I think is huge because then you've got that accountability on the calendar and with your kids, you know, yeah. with your, with your family to actually 
take that leap of faith, take that step forward. If you want to do the thing, put it on your calendar and do the thing, right? And you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out along the way. So I think the advice you gave was so practical and and so good and such a great starting point to jump in and start with your course. I would absolutely imagine we'll really cut down on that analysis paralysis. Um, I feel like you're going to share so much great information inside of that. So we'll link to your course in the show notes if you're interested in in checking that out and getting started. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it's great. It's a, Oh, I'm sorry. I interrupted you. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, you know, a lot of people ask, can I do this with my kids? And I would say if they're like younger than probably, you know, 12, 13, that you could go through the course with them older than that, they might be able to just do it on their own. It's very easy. It's interactive. You can ask me questions in it. Um, but I do, I have had, uh, several homeschooling people, families that have taken the course and used it as part of their curriculum, actually, you know, when they get, yeah. when they get into bringing chickens into their homeschooling experience. So that's definitely something that, um, that you can do with your kids. I just want to make sure that people understood that. Yeah, no, I think that's so great. Homeschool is so fun and so incredible because you can incorporate all kinds of things into your curriculum. And so what a What a great thing to incorporate. What a great way to learn about nature and animals and creation and life cycles and diligence and compassion and intuition and all the things that you talked about and shared today, Dahlia. What a fun conversation. I I just want to end this by telling you, thank you so much for coming on, for sharing your heart and for sharing your knowledge with us and all of these wonderful practical tips and insights. It's been such a joy to have you on the show. So thank you so much for sharing with us today. Oh, thank you. I I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Before we go, would you share with everybody where they can connect with you or follow you where they can get a hold of your course? Well, most people know me from my YouTube channel. It's called welcome to chicken landia. Um, I also have a podcast called Bok talk, and then I'm across like the social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm even on Twitter, although I'm not that active on Twitter. <laughs> um, of course I have my book, let's all keep chickens. That's from story public through story publishing. And you can get that at tractor supply, Amazon, you know, all the, the big bookstores and hopefully your local bookstore as well. And my course is Backyard Chickens 101, a chicken course for everyone. You can find all the links to all this stuff, all this information on my website. It is welcome to chickenlandia.com. That is great. That's that's fun and easy to remember. So everybody be sure and go check that out. Welcome to chickenlandia.com and go find Dahlia in all the places. Jump in and get started with her course. Go check her out on YouTube. You can check out her podcast. Dahlia, thank you again so much for being here with us today. And everybody, we're signing off with joy until next time.